Welcome back everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic Monday because this video is probably coming out Tuesday morning. So this week I have a whole lot of videos backed up that I am procrastinating doing essentially. But I thought, you know what would actually be kind of fun to do when people have asked me to do it in the past? Cover all of the vehicles and other things that were sent to the developers. If you're unaware, every month a bunch of vehicles that were suggested on the official forms are bundled together and sent to the developers for consideration. Now the reason why I never really bother to cover these because it doesn't predict anything Thing at all. Most of these considerations are thrown out the window and the ones that aren't you see like three years later. However, people still ask me to cover them so here I am covering all these interesting vehicles that are being sent to developers. I'm gonna do this in the order in which they put them out starting with aircraft and starting with the US. For this month the suggestion being sent to developers for the US is the F-107A Ultra Saber as it's being dubbed. This hunchback looking prototype jet was developed to compete against other designs to replace the F-100 Super Saber. However, unfortunately for the designers, and I say fortunately for the rest of the United States, this design was not chosen. Instead, they went with the Thunder Chief. Why it exactly was not stated, however, I could probably think of a few reasons why some military generals would hate the design, mainly resulting with the large scoop on top of the vehicle, making it look like some college dropouts rice car. Now, here's the question is, should it be in War Thunder? First, let's talk about its stats, and maybe where it could go in the tree. It supposedly had a top speed of 2,336 kilometers an hour with a climb rate of 203 meters per second. It had four 20 millimeter revolver cannons and could carry up to four AIM-9B infrared homing air-to-air -air missiles, as well as a good number of bombs or rockets. So if it were to be put into the tree, it would probably go right after the Super Saber as it is the attempted replacement of it. Although personally, I would not want to see it in game yet. Eventually, I'd love to see every single aircraft in game, but this one, I'd prefer the first have the Thunder Chief, the one that won out the contract. And this one, unless they do Super Sonic like premiums, which I doubt they're going to do, it could fit well as a bizarre event vehicle. Although I'm not exactly sure how many people are going to want to grind out a meme jet. Actually, maybe that could be pretty popular. The next one for the USSR is something that I would really love to see in game and have for a while. It is the BI-1 rocket fighter and the BI I'm pretty sure stands for a bad idea one. You see, it wasn't only the Germans who were thinking of putting a person in a rocket engine and flying them at bombers and telling them to shoot them down. The Russians did the same thing, though they never went as far as the Germans did. Now I don't want to go over the whole engine development. It's rather interesting if you like boring things. What's interesting is the vehicle was armed with two 20 millimeter cannons with a max speed of 800 kilometers an hour and a crime rate of 70 to 160 meters per second. However, it could only have two to 15 minutes of fuel depending on the engine thrust. So how would this all come into game? Well, I think the battery would probably be around 70, maybe 73, as well as definitely fast and probably pretty maneuverable. At least I'd hope so. It does, have, it does not have the firepower of the two 30 millimeters on the ME-163. Where it would go in the game, I'm not really sure. Maybe the Yak line, because there's a lot of weird Yak jets. Although, because it's a bizarre prototype, you could also see it come as a event or maybe premium. But overall, I would love to see this in game, as well as other early Russian jets, as they had a lot of interesting designs that were commonly just copying other nations' designs, but they're still pretty cool out there, and often very different than the presumed copy. The suggestion for Japan is an upgrade to the Mitsubishi T2. Not necessarily a module that you would upgrade the vehicle with, but to essentially give it more modern munitions, as it was used up to the year 2006. The main points of the suggestion page is that it should have up to four air-to-air -air missiles, as it had four hard points, and if it would be put into combat, it would, according to Page, be given the full loadout of four. The other point is that it should be armed with more modern air-to-air -air missiles, like AIM-9Ls, as when it was in service, it did use those, because it was in service to 2006. So the two sides I could understand this from is that it should not get these upgrades because does it really need AIM-9Ls? This would heavily outperform any other jets and air, air missiles. But the reason why maybe it should is because it performs worse than the ones that are currently at top tier, yet is also at top tier. So giving it the Ls would give it a little push to actually be competitive. It would have worse performance, but better missiles. I think we should just add the Mitsubishi F1 and give that all the cool modern stuff to be top tier jet. From my understanding, we're going to see some more jet power creep, so Japan is going to need to keep up. And the F1 with modern equipment would add a new jet, so Gaijin could get money from people paying to grind it, as well as keep Japan competitive at top tier. The next aircraft suggestion is for China to get the J7 
RNG, which I'm not going to mention all the details about because there's a very simple factor that China needs new top tier jets. Currently, they don't have a jet that can compete with the current modern top tier stuff. The J7 II is not cutting it. They need a new J7, at the least, ideally. So it does not matter what this thing's performance is so long as it's better than the prior one. It looks like it could carry more missiles and probably other cool things, but most of that is unnecessary. The point is that China needs new top tier things, so I'll take anything. After that one, we have one for Italy, the Elena Aramaki M346, which is a jet trainer from the year 2003, created at first by a joint adventure of Russia and Italy, but ended up being mainly Italy, that could carry a lot of things because it's from 2003 and is used to train pilots. To go down the list, we have IRSITs, AIM-9s, MRAAMs, 500 and 1000 pound bombs, MARTA ER anti-ship missiles, MARTA MKA-2 anti-ship missiles, AGM-65 Mavericks, Brimstones, 20 mm and 50 caliber gun pods, a multitude of rockets, LGY-39 bombs, LGB lizard missiles, SBD bombs, Lizard 2 laser guided bombs, missile approach warning system, laser warning receiver, flares and chaff. You see, for those reasons, I have to say that I do not want this in game, really ever. It doesn't fit. First of all, it's a trainer. And yes, we have the T2, which is also a trainer, but this is a very, very, very modern trainer. And while sure, we could add the jet without adding new ordnance, because Italy does need more jets that they built themselves. If you were to take away all the ordnance, you would have a kind of all right jet for Italy. It might reach 10-0. The climb is really high, but the speed is only 1,075 kilometers an hour. But if you were to give it all the modern ordnance, not only would it be a pain to go against Italy in ground battles because of the Brimstones and the Mavericks, but to have a technological advantage over a lot of jets currently in game with the laser warning receivers, missile approach warning, but also if it's advanced air to air missiles going up against jets that are most likely not going to be top tier because this thing itself is not going to be top tier. Maybe Tano because it has a really nice climb rate, but that top speed is really low. The general performance of the plane is not that great. That's the main issue I hold with the modern vehicles that are put into the lower tiers. For example, the R3, while on paper it seems, oh, it's just a go-kart with a 20 millimeter cannon and can't do too much, but it has a stabilizer. It's a two-plane stabilizer and the cannon has a fairly high velocity gun. So it can easily shoot down planes and tanks while speeding around the map and capping points. I don't think this thing would have as dramatic situation in air, but it would definitely be able to shoot down a lot of the early Cold War jets that it would be going up against. The MB700 was suggested for the French. It was a prototype lightweight fighter armed with two 20s and two 7.5s and had a max speed of 550 kilometers an hour. It seemed to be an all right plane and development was going well until the Germans attacked. When they captured the airfield, they found the intact fighter. However, they believed it to be a trap and like you should do to all traps, burnt it at the stake. Should it be out of the game? Definitely. France needs more World War II vehicles as they had quite a lot of them but they're not represented in game all that much. So this would be a great addition. Ideally in the main tree, I would say after the MB-152C1 as this is a lightweight version of that. However, Gaijin and all their intelligence decide to make that very common French fighter a, an event premium. So I guess you could have this one take its place where it should be at 2.3 right after the MS-410. The final aircraft being sent to developers for this month was for Sweden, but it was a British aircraft. It's a J-30 or commonly known as the Mosquito, more precisely the Mark 19 version. Should they get it? Well, the tree already has some other copy paste. It wouldn't be too much to develop this thing, and hey, it's a Mosquito. They're all right planes. I'm pretty sure Sweden does have some of their own vehicles that should be added before we start getting into imports, but I guess if people really want it, there's no reason not to add it. The Swedish tree is pretty thin, and it'd fit well right before the P-51 they have. So now let's get on to the tank, starting with the US, and this is quite a quick one. The person who made the suggestion made a pretty good ex of it is the missing link between the M42 and M41, the T37 light tank. All around its armor was essentially 25 millimeters with 35 in the front of the turret and was armed with a 76 millimeter T94 gun that could penetrate 137 millimeters. Although it does not give the range, the tank would essentially just be like the Hellcat but a light tank so it could be fit at 5.3 or 5.7 and it would go right in between the M24 and M41. I think it would be a great idea, however I would still not grind it as I'm not 
gonna grind any of the US light tanks until they give me my damn M24 LT. Gosh darn it guys didn't give it to me. The next one down is something I really like the idea of, although I don't know if the German tree still needs it. It is the Prototype Panther VK3002 M. Visually it looks like just any old Panther. What really makes it different is the armor. It boils down to where you see 80 millimeters on the current Panther D, this one had 60, and where you see 100 millimeters on the current Panther D, this one had 80. Now I'm pretty sure the gun is the same, so overall essentially it would be a lower tier Panther. And it would ideally go around 5.0 or 5.3 and have the actual Panther go back to 5.7 because it doesn't need to be 5.3, you damn weirboos are terrible at the game. Although unfortunately no Gaijin, they'd probably make it an event vehicle. But this and a thick Panzer 3 before the Tiger would be ideal to widen the German tree around that area so there isn't such high jump to 5.7 which is now 5.3. Following that is another Axis tank, well not really because it's modern, the TKX-005, the fifth prototype, the Type 90. Now if you were to go to Gander over to the Japanese tree you'd probably notice that there's quite the jump from 8.7 to 10.3 as well as a lack of top tier tanks. This has been an issue ever since the Japanese tree was added to the game. Now the solution had always been obvious to me and many other weeaboos, add some of the prototypes to the tree. Not just the STV-1 but the STV-2, 3, 4, 5 and I think there were 7 total. I don't remember maybe 6. As well as the STA-3 and as well the prototypes to the Type 90. So this tank there's a different need for but what exactly is different between it and the Type 90? Well starting off the major one is the armor layout is different. It actually I believe coincides with how the armor layout was originally on the Type 90. Covering much less of the turret though not dramatically. I'm pretty sure also the protection value is the same. I believe also with this precise prototype is that it had the same gun and autoloader but did not have JM33. It only had access to DM23. With these slight changes this version of the prototype could easily slip into perhaps 10-0. Now if Gaijin is going to consider this prototype I would hope that they at least also take into consideration the other prototypes especially the first one which visually looked much different than the Type 90. As well as if we could get the prototypes of the Type 74 and of the Type 61 it could definitely fill out a lot of gaps in the Japanese tree. And if it doesn't fill out those gaps at the very least it could add some proper lineups to the Japanese tree. Once all those complete we could move on to prototypes of the Type 10 and the Type 10 itself perhaps. The next suggestion is for Italy and it's kind of a funny one. It is a 40 millimeter bow force attached to a leopard chassis. Not a whole lot else to say on this thing. The leopard chassis is a leopard chassis and has the same armor values. And I also presume same engine. And the cannon is your typical 70 millimeter long, 40 millimeter wide bow force that could probably shoot a wide range of ammunition. If I were to put the tree, obviously it'd go in the spag line and Italy does need some more spags. Although really, if you think about it, the R3 has them covered for quite some time. It would probably be, if it doesn't have TV fuse 6.0, if it does, maybe a 7.3. The French tank suggestion is for a tank destroyer. Well, it was originally going to be end of the line, but it looks like the line has updated since this suggestion came out. This tank destroyer seems to be a big old box with tracks and a large cannon that shoots ATGMs. And because of that, I can't really see it being added to game as it does the same thing as the AMX-30 ACRA. It's just a box casemate box. Which I guess there could be some value in because it would be funny looking but functionally wouldn't it be any different than the current tank we have. I don't know maybe you could put there at 80. Maybe you could folder them together. And finally for Sweden is the Panzerbill M41 which is like a Swedish BA-11. Although instead of a cannon it has a 20 millimeter auto cannon. I could pan around 25 millimeters which kind of puts it in the iffy area of would it be effective in game. Many vehicles that could pan under that were removed. However overall it's a cool vehicle. Very small. Swedish, and I would like to see more armored cars, especially the early ones that are more car than armored car added into the game. Only two for naval, and the first one is quite hilarious. You see, when Germans were conquering Europe, they found themselves many cannons and many vessels just laying about. And they're like, what if we combine the two? Because the allies keep on bombing us. So that's what you have here with the flagship Anilbut, or however the hell that's pronounced. Germans just speak English already. You've lost how many wars to us? One more, and we're taking away your language okay no more you're gonna speak English you could it could be British English we could compromise you could speak British English which basically isn't English or one of those weird Irish languages but if you do it again we're taking away German it's not a lot anymore okay anyways essentially what this is is a Dutch protected cruiser strapped with God knows how many anti-aircraft guns it had eight 105 millimeter cannons 16 20 millimeter cannons and four by four configurations and four 40 mils to make a long story short the Soviets were able to sink her finally 
importantly, by using Soviet tactics of overwhelming them with numbers, though that seems to be pretty common naval air force tactics, at least back then. As much as I'd love to see this thing in game because of how ridiculous it is, the last time I suggested something ridiculous be added in game, it kind of ruined naval forces a little bit. It was my suggestion to add the flak barges. I kid you not, in the closed beta testing forum section, there was, hey, any boats that you'd like to see in game? And I was like, yeah, here's a flak barge, an image of a flak barge. I think it'd be hilarious. So I'm sorry about that one. I'm gonna keep my hands away from recommendations of this thingy. You guys can make up your mind about it. The other naval suggestion is for a Japanese post-war destroyer, the JDS Harukaze, and had, like many post-war ships, a rather underwhelming armament of three five-inch guns and two quad 40 mm Beaufort cannons, and a later configuration carried a torpedo tube. The next section is for helicopters, and there's only two suggestions. One for a US helicopter, because the US definitely needs more helicopters. The OH-58D, which looks like a helicopter you'd see in an action film that's supposed to be an attack helicopter but they can't afford Apaches. Like other modern US helicopters it was full of all kinds of crazy electronics and ordnance. I don't really think the US needs any more helicopters. Should focus on some other trees to be added before we start like filling out the US helicopter tree. And the other one is the AW139M for Italy. Italy currently has one premium helicopter and no actual tree so see making a suggestion for them to add to the tree is kind of pointless because they don't have a tree yet. Maybe we should send the suggestion to add a Italian helicopter tree there. Well apparently they're supposed to get one sometime this year. So maybe a suggestion to what should be in that tree makes sense. Generally this helicopter looks to me like any other helicopter but a bit bulkier. In general I don't really care for helicopters unless they only fire dumb rockets and have low battle ratings because otherwise I feel like they just ruin the game. Oh look that black speck in the background killed you because he was pointing his crosshair at you for like six seconds. I wish when I got into the next topic which is far more interesting which is the maps and there's two suggestions here one the first one is for a map of the liberation of Paris which would be a great idea for a map as you not only see iconic structures but also historically a battle did happen there issue I would have is, is it would be another city map which are really flat and kind of boring overall though I would be pro the map as it's a cool location and I'd love to fly a plane through the Eiffel Tower or the other weird French building now the other one I won't be able to fit all the details into a single video unless you want the damn thing to be like an hour long. It was a massive suggestion for a major overhaul of the Enduring Confrontation to essentially turn it into a combined arms continuous battle, which would be fighting over an island. So you would have naval forces, you would have, of course, air forces and tank battles on the island itself. And the island would be cut up to multiple, I guess, smaller maps that have three areas to capture. And once you get all those, you can move on to the next location. Now, he also had a bunch more gameplay mechanics to be added to the game and a whole lot of other stuff. I haven't read through the entire thing. Overall, the idea is very interesting and I'd be pro it. I've been always pro a combined forces gameplay that involves tanks, aircraft, and naval units. A few criticisms I have here is that it's a lot to ask for, like some major alterations to gameplay and including a large number of new mechanics that I don't entirely see as necessary. But what really annoys me to a unnecessarily high degree is the possible locations for the World War II era that he's proposing is the liberation of the island Jersey. But Jersey was never historically liberated. It, well, I guess it was after the Germans surrendered. So instead of choosing one of the many islands that not only do we already have maps of that are in the Pacific, but he chooses some random island that never actually was liberated, never had, saw a conflict as the possible suggestion. World War II suggestion should be Saipan. Saipan not only saw naval conflict, aerial conflict, but also tank conflict. So historically it makes sense. Also it would be much more interesting to have two islands being invaded, not just one. The section after this one is rather easy. It's skins and decals. Somebody's asking for a Vietnam camouflage for the F5, which all right, that'd be neat. Not much else to say about that. It's just asking for a camo. As well as more Japanese self-defense force decals, which I'd be totally for because I'm disgusting weeaboo. And then the following section, interface, somebody's asking for a clock in the UI, which all right, you don't have like a watch or a phone to cheap track of time? Sure, whatever. The other one was much more interesting. It was an upgradable hangar. At face value, I like the idea. However, I can already say that Gaijin would be against it because, well, their excuse would be that you can already change your hangar with user mods. And in the dude's suggestion, he's trying to make it so the hangar, as you upgrade it, it affects things in game, essentially the economy. It seems more silly like he just wants lower repair costs, which I don't blame him for, but I feel that a hangar customization should be more aesthetic 
graphic than affecting any gameplay measure. For example, I'd like to be able to change the planes that are behind the plane that you're currently spectating to be either ones I choose to be to show off my cool collection. And I also like to if I could have some of my other planes fly around in the sky, especially in the harbor, because it would look really cool. The last four sections, events, gameplay, graphics and sound, and miscellaneous had some interesting ones. For events, it was a suggestion for a Japanese self-defense force day, which you could receive some interesting decals, perhaps. No reason why not, I guess. For gameplay, there was one to improve artillery range by latching on to where your allies are. There were some more ideas into it, however, in my opinion, it's not really necessary because artillery is mostly useless. But really, this would just lead to an R3 running to a cap point and then everyone nuking the cap point with artillery. There was a suggestion to add a limited scouting ability to simulator. The idea was interesting until I read that if you scouted a friendly by mistake, the enemy, will, enemy team will see the scouted vehicle on the map. Which makes no sense at all. If you accidentally scouted a friendly, why would the enemy see it? It's supposed to be a simulation. That's what sim stands for. And the final gameplay one was to improve the test map. Make it a propriety test map, not just a part of Kursk with some tanks on it. Which I would be in full support of because the current test map is a little lame. Not a whole lot of paved roads to get good top speeds. Not many steep hills to try to really see how well that depression works. And airplanes don't spawn unless you're playing in a spag, which is annoying because Sometimes you like to see how the commander machine gun handles against aircraft. It's also really annoying to see if the vehicle can float, you have to drive really far to get to the water. While a proprietary test map would be very cool, I personally would love to see either test maps based on nationality of the vehicle or allow you to test vehicles in the hangar map, drive around there. You'd have to change some things so it actually has things to test stuff, but it would be cool to drive around your own hangar, especially if you could customize it. The one for graphical and sound was when aircraft crash into the ground to have some skid marks which would be cool personally i'd love to see some deformable terrain much more than just leaving tracks which would be really cool with tanks and bombs however i'm not sure if guys you could handle that and finally one that is bizarre because i thought it did exist but it doesn't a frame rate limiter why isn't there a frame rate limiter already in game like every other game ever that i've ever played has one of those but this one doesn't you can limit with v-sync i guess but there's no other way to do it so if you got amd i guess you're screwed but anyways, there is all of them. This video is far too long. I hope you enjoy it very much. Before I end this video first, I'd like to thank the Global Superstars, also known as my Patrons and members. So starting with the Patrons, we have Tex and CMDR Edward. Thank you very much, guys. And for the $1 YouTube members, we have Casper the Great, Bouncy Seal, Cupcake Jesus, T for Tom, Luce, Mako, and Raymond Saints. For the $5 YouTube members, there is Liza Sifu Di, GG Ultra Blue, I like them thick. Matthew Cameron, Lars Henrik, Peter Kunglinski, Nico Korkamaki, Mehmet Hazarchi, Tex as well, Roger Rammer, Grimace, Mighty Peppers, Pointless Gun Sinks, and Waffly Joker 6. And for the single $10 YouTube member is Joe Blopsky. Thank you very much, guys, especially you, Joe Blopsky. And your domination of the globe, I hope you see many victories. All patrons and YouTube members that give $5 or more a month receive videos a little bit early, while all YouTube members get a unique Discord role. So if you'd love to help out the channel, it'd be much appreciated. There should be links in the description, or you can press the join button. Thank you very much for watching. This is the first time I'm doing a past developers video, so if you do like it, be sure to hit that like button or comment down below, and I will do more of them. If you don't like it, don't hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and make War Thunder Weekly News videos on Friday. I make reviews for the week, and I like to stream on Saturday. So be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload anything at all. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. In the terms of bonus news, it should be a bonus suggestion, but I, I already read all the suggestions that were past developers. So, here's some bonus news. The patch is coming out tomorrow, apparently, which sucks, because I was going to go on a road trip. 